Keeping in mind the sins that you have committed, please recite with me the second form of the Confidio. I confess to Almighty God, one and the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, even the brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in the heart of the By my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, As penance for your sins, I ask you, say or recite one Christmas card. It doesn't matter which one, Polish Christmas card or English, American, it doesn't matter, of course, in which language, Polish or English. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. You, Lord, Show us your mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so we may enter the whole of glories 
with purified hearts, through Christ our Lord. After Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water and beheld the heavens were opened for him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. He shows pity to the needy and the poor and saves the lives of the poor. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, please hear our prayer. Acceptable to him. 
You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. Right. The gradual. Yours, O Lord, are grandeur and power, majesty, splendor, and glory, for all in heaven and on earth is yours. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Riches and honor are from you, and you have dominion over all. In your hand are power and might. and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the tongues on his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. microphone and probably would be better if I will say something to you in the sermon from this place than without microphone because my voice is not too strong like Father Robert Cole. Jesus also had been baptized and was praying. Taken from today's Gospel according to Saint Luke chapter 3rd verse 21. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ, 
something new and big was happening. John the Baptist was baptizing in the Jordan all those who came to him. This was new and big because before now the only people who normally were baptized were Gentiles converting to become Jews. The baptism of Gentiles showed they were living behind their old Gentile way of life to live their new life as Jews. Their baptism meant a clear break with their past life to begin their new life as Jews. Previously only Gentiles becoming Jews were baptized, but now the Jews themselves are being baptized by Saint John the Baptist. Even though they did not fully understand, they were preparing for the coming of Jesus by baptizing in the Jordan. What was happening was extraordinary. It means Judaism is about to be overtaken by something new by Christianity. Christ will fulfill the expectations of Judaism. Christ will be the center of people's lives, not the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus too was baptized in the Jordan River. He did not need John's baptism. John's baptism was a sign of repentance from sin. Since baptism was a sign of repentance from sin, the Gospel writers found different ways of dealing with the difficulty that Jesus' baptism caused. Why would sinless Jesus be baptized when baptism was a sign of repentance from sin? In the Gospel according to St. Matthew, John the Baptist objects to baptizing Jesus, but Jesus insists. And Jesus was taking our sins down into the Jordan River, so his baptism and cross go together. In the Gospel according to St. Luke, which we just heard, St. Luke gets around the difficulty of Jesus' baptism in a different way by simply saying Jesus had been baptized without actually saying John baptized him. While Jesus didn't need baptism, we certainly do need baptism. When we were baptized, we received the spirit that Jesus received. Also after Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended on him in a bodily form like that. John the Baptist said he himself baptized only with water, but Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. That baptism with the Spirit and fire, as we know, took place at Pentecost when Jesus in heaven poured out the Spirit on the apostles and others in the form of tongues of fire in the upper room. And we receive the Spirit first at baptism and a greater share in the Spirit at confirmation. So the Spirit, Holy Spirit, which came on Jesus at his baptism, is given to us also when we are baptized. Jesus didn't need baptism, but wanted to be baptized because baptism would be the way in which we would begin to share in his life, in communion with his Father through the Holy Spirit. 
At the end of the Gospel, according to St. Matthew, we hear Jesus commanding the Apostles to baptize all nations. Everything we do in the Church is done because of Jesus. And we are baptized because he commanded to the Apostles to baptize all nations. Brothers and sisters, in today's Gospel reading, we see something else we do or we should do because of Jesus. Saint Luke tells us Jesus was praying after his baptism. We pray because Jesus prayed and taught us to pray. Saint Luke emphasizes in his Gospel reduction that Jesus prayed on many occasions. Only Saint Luke tells us, as we heard today, that Jesus was praying after his baptism. After the cure of the leper, Jesus went to the desert to pray and Saint Luke makes it clearer that it was Jesus' custom to pray. Only Saint Luke tells us that Jesus spent all night praying before the choice of the twelve apostles, showing us that the choice of the twelve has come from the God Father. Only Saint Luke tells us that Jesus was transfigured while he prayed. These are just some of many instances where we see Jesus pray in the Gospel according to St. Luke. Whatever we do in the church, we do because of Jesus. And so St. Luke shows us the early church in the Acts of the Apostles as a church that prayed. They prayed waiting Pentecost. They prayed when choosing Judas' replacement and on many other occasions. Jesus prayed, and so the Church prayed, and we pray. Jesus was baptized, and we are baptized. Jesus prayed, and we pray. And something big happened in the Jordan River, something big happened in our lives when we were baptized. We were completely different afterwards, sharing in God's divine love. <coughs> what a beautiful way to live! Prayer enables us to continue to experience the benefits of our baptism. There are a number of secular studies showing that prayer is good for you. That is no surprise, because, especially for us, because when we pray, we come into the presence of God. And there is a different way to live. Not living with the benefits of our baptism. That is a sad way to live. How could one be truly happy living that way? It is difficult to understand some people, but most politicians here in our country or in Europe who say there are Christians, even Catholics, but what, want what is immoral and contradicts our faith. How can you live with the life of Jesus in you since baptism and at the same time want something that would kill the life of Jesus? It doesn't make sense. Something is missing in the story. Living with the life of Jesus since baptism strengthened through daily prayer, it is the most beautiful way to love. 
My dear, in our Polish National Catholic Church, we start 2019 year as a year of discipleship. This month of January, Jesus is calling us to discipleship. He is calling us to follow him. And we should follow him, of course, in the prayer too. Let us rediscover once again the importance of daily prayer in our life. Let us follow Jesus and pray like Jesus at every occasion. Let us pray more individually and together as a family. We do not pray enough. Can we pray more? Yes, we can. And Jesus is waiting for you to spend time with him in prayer. As you spend time with Jesus in prayer, you will receive his life and his blessings. You will be different and have his love, his life, and his peace in you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Lord our God, you presented your beloved Son to the world at the River Jordan. May we who bring you these offerings now walk in the newness of life. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and trains with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, 
draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritual and body in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his Almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent cherries into his whole and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and His blessed Passion, Resurrection, and His glorious Ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your Divine Majesty, from your own gifts and presents, a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them, as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Ayo, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar, the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have come before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who are in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through the same Christ, our Lord, Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives pattered after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, and in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with
and pure truth, and by intercession of the Blessed and Glorious Mother of God Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul and also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Support and by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and trains with you in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this communion and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you who lives and reigns, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. That I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken me, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and the holy longing. Through this communion, make me a willing servant zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this, who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return to the Lord for all the graces He has given me? I will take the chariots of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise, I will call upon the Lord and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world.
Can you drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? The Lord be with you. effective for myself and all those for whom I offer it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you.